with our next speaker, who is going to talk exactly about this, exactly about the psychology of being a founder and what it is to be one. And I want to welcome on stage Ivo Christov, who is the founder of the yeah. social media startup Confo, which now has more than 70 people here and in Denmark. <laughs> and he's with us today exactly to touch upon this topic of the founder's mindset. Please welcome Ivo on stage. Hi, can you hear me? Hey. hey. Hi everyone, I'm Ivo Christov, and um, today we're going to discuss founder psychology. I don't know about you, but ever since I was that little, I was wondering what makes a founder successful. I was wondering what makes it or breaks it for a business, and as we all know, that's the founders, that's the core founders team. And um, two startups later, uh, one successful and one unsuccessful, I still ask myself the question, what makes someone successful in business and what makes someone unsuccessful in business? And that's the founder's psychology. We know that when founders fail, the startups fail. We know that it's really hard uh, to make a startup, and if you give up early in the process, or before you actually done something, then your startup fails. Just imagine it in this way. Imagine that the startup founders are the pilots of a plane. If the pilots are uh, depressed, unsure, liable, experiencing panic attacks, burnout, or something like that, then the plane doesn't stand a chance. But on the other hand, if the startup uh, founders and the pilots of the plane they are happy, energetic, very well motivated. If they have all the power in the world to conquer everything that's in their sight, then the startup has higher and higher chances. If we put it on a map, in our conscious, in our psychology, there is hundreds of different things that can affect us to be more motivated and to be more energetic and to put on more hours of work. Some are more important, some not so much. In this, let's say that this is the map of our psychology. Some of the dots that you see are red, those are the important ones, and some are blue that are not so important. These are all elements and pieces that affect our psychology. And the good thing about psychology is that it's different for everyone. For me, something might be very important, for someone else, it could be a different thing, right? And I want to pay close attention to only one of those elements right now, but you take it for me that as much as you work with yourself, you are getting more chances to succeed. And I want to zoom in a little bit on the progress and the motivation. See, usually things work in that way. We are motivated really about achieving something. It might be a startup or something else. And then we do some hard work. We see the progress of our work. And then we got some more motivation. And I want you to pay very close attention to this. When we see the progress of our work, when we see that our efforts and hard work are paying off, then we're getting more motivation. It's like that. If we're building a brick wall, and we put one brick over the other, and then some more, at the end of the day, we step back and we see that the building we are building is a little bit higher. Then that's very motivational. That gives us energy and power to continue working. If we put it on a graph, it looks something like that. The more time and effort we spend on something, we are motivated when we can see the results, whatever the results are. If it's money or if it's something else, as long as we can see that our work pays off, the more we are motivated to continue. But in the startup world, it's nothing like that. It looks a little bit closer to this. It, the graph looks close to a stair, right? It's some kind of stairs. You work, and you work, and you work some more, and then you don't see any result. And then you somehow get some more energy, and you continue working, 
and competitors are beating you. Some employees are leaving and you're getting some really hard time. And it's really dark over here, right? Where you don't see your results. And at some point, it's a giant spike going up in the results. In my previous company, Comfu, we were doing social media. And uh, that time was uh, when I actually got uh, selected to be one of Facebook's Facebook preferred developer consultants. In a world where social media was all about Facebook, the mothership actually approved us to be one of only nine companies in Europe that are featured on their website. And things got really big. We got huge media coverage. We've got a lot of clients ringing us. And I mean, some big fish, some of the world's biggest companies. And in our region, where we're primarily selling the Scandinavian countries, we were the only one company that was featured by Facebook. And we've got this big spike over a week. And then it got flat again for a very long time. And you work, and you don't see the results. And then it spikes again. And then it's flat again, and then spikes. It's, it's like that in the startup world. And it's really demotivating, and it's really hard because Sometimes you work and you don't see your progress. And one of the qualities and the psychology of successful startups is exactly like that. If you can turn that graph to look something like this, if you manage to make all your work be kind of more visible, then you got more motivation and you got more power. Because when things are really hard, and you don't see the results somewhere over here. I've seen too many teams that are splitting up. I've seen too many people quitting exactly because they start having all these dark thoughts. Am I going to succeed? Is it, all, uh, is it me that's going to succeed? My product is not good enough. They start thinking why their work is not paying off, why they can't see their effort, right? And we really want you to be motivated to continue until you see that giant spike where all your work pays off. So for everyone, it's a little bit different. And I'm going to give you one of my, I call them mind games, because psychology is all about mind games. That actually makes me stick until I see the results. What I actually do is I change the axis of this graph. Yes, it looks like stairs if you are measuring time and effort versus dollars in the bank. But if you measure something else, then you got to change the graph and you get the graph to look more like the blue line, not the red line. Um, I very much believe in one thing, and that's if you spend 10,000 hours doing one and the same thing, you get to be genius in it. And it works like this. You know, uh, pilots of planes, they are evaluated on how good they are based on flight hours. So no matter if you're flying in good weather or in bad weather, no matter if you are just prepping the aircraft for takeoff or you're flying through a storm, it's counted hours that is put in their flight books and they got seniority and they got promoted based on how many hours they've been flying the plane. And it works like this for me. I count my startup hours. I blindly believe that whatever I want, I will get if I get enough experience. And we can all sit on conferences like this, read books, watch videos, but experience is what really counts. And I blindly believe that experience for me will sooner or later translate to something that I want, whatever I measure the success in. So. Even if it is the worst possible week of the company, I still got experience. Actually, it goes even, uh, even better. The worst startup experience is the most valuable one because flying in good weather never made uh, someone a good pilot. Flying through the storm is actually making you very good. And get one, uh, get this one, actually. If your current company fails right now, you get to keep your experience for the next one. But working day to day, we tend to forget all these things, right? So it really helps if you can make it a little bit more visible. What we do is we put some screens for our employees and we visualize some of the KPIs we want to improve. 
But you, as a startup founder, if you find a way to visualize what you're measuring, something that will remind you that every day you're working on is giving you experience. I, I, I can give you a suggestion, actually. Uh, one thing that you can do is for 50 hours of startup piloting, you draw something on the office wall or you paint something small. It could be an airplane. And suddenly you will see that airplanes are stacking up and they're building. And you will have the added bonus that uh, whenever someone walks in your office uh, and they see the planes and they will ask, hey, what is this? It's up to you to decide if you're going to uh, actually answer them or you're going to keep it for you. But you are constantly reminded that whatever you do, good or bad, is actually giving you experience. And that is progress. And progress gives us motivation to continue and go on and go on. So um, one thing that uh, I recommend to everyone who is uh, very, uh, very first time uh, startup is to start a business that you can actually see the results of your work. So if you're a first time startup or and uh, let's say you want to do the next uh, HR software, for example, but you don't have experience in the area, you don't have the contacts, and you actually don't know where to start, I recommend that you start the website. Not only because you uh, will get some of the domain knowledge, that you will get some experience, you will get some traction, but mostly because you see the product of your work. Because when you start checking the analytics, you see people coming to your website, you see people commenting, you see people interacting with what you've created, and that's deeply motivating, right? So what about the progress and the employee motivation? Um, I'll tell you a story. 12 years ago, I was working as a software developer, and I was working uh, day and night on a product. And the management decided to scratch that product off. They decided that it wouldn't continue to be developed, and we never shipped. And I was devastated. See, on my side, nothing really happened. I got my pay, I got my uh, salary, uh, I was reassigned to another project. I even got a little bit of uh, promotion on the new project. I had to lead uh, people, and everything on paper was good. But I was devastated. I was devastated because I didn't have to see what I was creating, right? And think about this when you're doing startups, because startup is like we try one direction, and then we change it, and then we change something else. Keep a close eye on your employees, especially if someone is too attached to what you are doing. Be very honest to them, explain, and uh, actually uh, talk with them even before they start working for you that things like this are very often to happen in a startup, right? And also, it, when we're discussing progress and motivation, keep in mind also that it really helps if you can uh, show to your employers, uh, employees that uh, they are having progress. Not only the progress of the company, but their own progress within the company. So maybe uh, you do a six-month check where you constantly remind them how they are growing and how they are developing their skills. Because uh, in the last five, six years, I've been recruiting IT people to join the company that I was creating. And uh, I constantly see one thing. People are coming on interviews and they see, uh, in my previous company, I can't see myself developing. And I'm having some kind of talk with them. And I find out that they're not stuck at a dead-end job where they don't develop themselves. But they just don't see it because when you are involved in a day-to-day -day work, you hardly remember what was six months ago and how you struggled with working with uh, this or that. I personally, myself, I catch myself some day when things are hard to thinking, hey, nothing is developing, things are all the same, I don't see any progress. But I use a service called Email to the Future, and I write emails from me to me but I only send it six or 12 months ahead of time. And every time when I read one of those emails, I actually get to see that things are developing very well, and uh, I get to remember what was six or 12 months ago. And this is actually how our, our brain works. Uh, it's very 
uh, connected to associations. I don't write myself, hey, I'm uh, on this and this level, but I just tell my future self what I'm working on today and tomorrow. And when I read the emails, I start to remember things. And I start to remember how I was feeling. I start to remember what other tasks that I haven't been describing in the emails uh, I've been working on, and I actually see progress. What about if you do this for your employees uh, every six months, but you concentrate on showing them that they're developing their skills, that they're developing uh, unique skills that they wouldn't be developing in other companies, and um, I promise you that you get to keep more of your employees if you're doing something like that, all right? And um, what else? Uh, progress and motivation is one out of uh, hundreds and hundreds of things that we need to pay attention. I just wanted to give you an example. And uh, I'll quickly just mention a few others, but I want to pay a special attention to co-founders. See, we as, per, uh, as people, we have our emotions. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, um, and that all affects our startups. It doesn't uh, make sense for big uh, 100 plus corporations. And um, if you're having a company that has hundreds of people, if the CEO is having a bad day, that doesn't really affect the company. You have processes, you have different lines of management, and um, it doesn't actually, um, the company future doesn't actually depend so much on the uh, mood of one person. But if you are just a few guys working on a startup, your moods and your personal life is affecting very much the startup. It actually works the other way around. Your startup is affecting your personal life, but I want to concentrate on your personal life. So see, if your girlfriend dumped you because you are spending too much hours working on a startup, that actually works. For some people, it works like motivation for hours really bringing them down. And your goal as startup founders is to find out what motivates you and what feeds you energy and what brings you down. Because if you know those things, you actually get to tune them and to be more successful and to steal some more energy when you need it. And one more thing, if you have a co-founder, what we have found out is that co-founders are usually on different uh, spikes of the vibe. So you might be the blue one, your uh, co-founder might be the red one. And what we do as co-founders is we pull each other up. So if you see that your co-founder is down, you do everything possible to lift them up and go up. It's not like the usual boyfriend-girlfriend relationship when you actually pull each other down. So if your girlfriend is having a very good day and you how could she be so happy? And you do something to make her miserable. No, with co-founders, it's the other way around. You actually see if they are down and you do everything possible to lift them up because the startup is very dependent on that, right? And that's probably one of the reasons why we see that single founder companies are slightly less successful than uh, uh, good uh, co-founder teams company, right? All right. So, other things that can affect, that's overworking. We pride ourselves for working 15 hours a day, spending more than 80 hours a week, not having enough rest. That's actually not uh, that good because we're working with our mind. And uh, it doesn't matter if we're working 15 hours a day, if we can do things for 10 hours and we can do them better and then spend to get some uh, vacation or some leisure time. Uh, I've seen that, I've seen actually two different sites. Uh, one is that uh, people are overworking themselves up to the point that they might reach a burnout and they can't perform anymore, or they are working too less. So don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you that you're gonna succeed in startup if you are working two hours a day and then spend the time drinking wine with your team. No, I don't preach that you should be lazy. I'm just saying that you need to spend some time recharging your batteries and to feeding your mind with good emotions. Also, food is very important and always underestimated. When we are working in startups, we tend to eat junk food. We're depleting our body from vital minor, um, minerals and vitamins, which actually their deficiency is messing up with our brain, makes us more moody and more vulnerable 
And uh, actually, that's really um, starting to affect some of the startup people. Also, uh, exercising does a great job to the mind. Sleeping does wonders to productivity. Keep in mind that your friends and families are your lines of support when things got really hard. All right? So if you're going to remember something is that your emotions and your mind play vital role in your startup careers. Thank you. Woo! So good.